pauses. And as always, there's a link to a Q&A pad on the events page. And uh, DC prefers Python to PHP, studies IT, and has an interest in open data in the energy sector. And under PlantWatch.de, he started a project where he links the list of power stations by the official authorities with the data from the EU emissions register. And hello from me, too. It is, this is going to be about plant watch, which is why the interpreters will probably prefer power plant. I'm going to talk about how it started. And I started in November 2017. At this time, there was no Climate Protection Act. There was no uh, phasing out of coal. There was no uh, judgment on climate protection from the German Constitution Court. And there was no pandemic either, but I was, I cared about the issue anyway. So I thought I'll take an Excel sheet that the German infrastructure authority uh, is publishing online and um, I'll work on that. This is the, um, these are the signs. So we have the CO2 emissions, we have the efficiency values, we have production, and the power plants are colored according to the fuels that they use. And to come to look on one of these, uh, clicking on one of these leads you to the in details on that particular power station. Um, and uh, including emission data. <coughs> And if you then go to the actual load on these power plants, you get that for the individual power station, a power plant as well. And the amount of the, the terabyte, what a terawatt hours produced. If you click on individual, individual items, such as uh, this one called BNA1401B, you have data on the individual power plant, where it is located and so on. No problems. Well, for some power plants, you find the year 1970 as the year of <clears throat> the year when it started. Um, for some of these power plants, Google Maps will show you maps that do not uh, are not correct, not at the really correct location. And I am also affected by the current. Django security hole, which is why the site is offline at the moment. Um, I'm not processing any personal data. I, I regenerate the data as soon as a new um, um, plant is published. The site is not offline, but I'll patch it as soon as possible. So what is the competition, as it were? We have the energy charts operated by Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy Systems. That's operated by Bruno Burger, who's quite active on Twitter as well. And they have uh, very diverse diagrams on um, power generation. Then there is the electricity map, which is current power production, including CO2 emissions. And there is SMARD, uh, a chart by the Federal Grid Agency. We have the energy charts here, uh, annual power, power production or electricity production grouped by power plants and uh, into these colored blocks and the full um, capacity uh, or the full load that is on the individual blocks of the power plants. Here you've got uh, maps of Europe from electricity map, you see CO2 emissions. You can see that countries such as the UK and Spain that do not solely uh, use uh, nuclear power uh, already have lower CO2 emissions than Germany does and power generated by the Federal Grid Agency. So if you have, if you're more interested in the issue, here are these other sources for other interesting data. Back to PlantWatch. So I have three main sources for the data. You have the, I have the plant list by the Federal Grid Agency, the list of 
power plant blocks. One plant can have more than one block. We have seen that already. And this is uh, updated about twice per year. Then you have the PRTR, the Pollutant Release and Transfer Register, that doesn't just have emission data of all the power plants, but any kind of plant that has a duty and obligation to report and that emits, uh, <coughs> emits CO2, and this is published once per year. And these then are the data of the year before the year before. So in 2022, data from 2020 should be available, and we'll come to that later on. And then we have the energy market data. Again, the Federal Grid Agency publishes this quite short term. And uh, let's look at the way these data are structured. The power plant list has a, a good structure. There's an identifier for each plant or block, and it's quite good, quite easy to work with that data. The pollutant register uh, publishes data as SQLite databases, and uh, that's a bit better. And the SMART data, well, that has a slightly difficult format, which we will see. So three data sources, and I have to then work on uh, mapping these entities with each other, plant blocks, for example. Uh, as far as the plant register is concerned, that is quite possible. Every block has an ID, um, BA and a number, and I map that to the ID of the PRTR data. That's a one-to-one -one mapping. It is a bit of an arduous work, but it's possible. If you look at the smart data, so that's CSV, okay. You could, of course, open that in a spreadsheet, uh, giving you nice columns. But there is one file here um, called power plant, and the blocks in practice are somehow included uh, in these columns. Uh, the generation DE column is relevant here. Um, that could have been better structured to make it machine readable. And uh, therefore, it is rather complex to, to map. We have this JSON, Dixon, JSON dictionary, which I use to link the names from the files to the ID numbers that I had before. But it is still doable. It is a bit more effort, though. Right. This is a screenshot of this website from the Federal Grid Agency. Uh, they publish these data, and as you can see, the reporting years from 2007 to 2019 have been available since mid-December last year. So, that is actually quite late. So, the 2019 data should have been available in February 2021, which wasn't the case. I asked via Fracht den Staat, the Freedom of Information website, in the, at, in the first, on the 1st of December, and in mid-December it was published. And I was also given, uh, I also received an answer through the Freedom of Information website saying that it was published. Is that all good then? Well, I asked about the 2020 data at the same time, in, well, in February, that is, of 2022, and there wasn't a response for a long time. Um, Shortly after my query, there was a, an informal email saying that there were IT problems, so the data was not forthcoming, it said. And in April, in April I asked again, and uh, I then received a formal response saying the data isn't, still isn't there, and that is very regrettable, because these are environment data, and the EU actually prescribes that these data should be published 13 months after they are generated. That would be February, but there is no data. Why is that? I'm not going to um, blame the Federal Environment Protection Agency, this agency, but we have federalism. It's a matter for the individual federal states in Germany. So the, the local authorities have to register this data, collect this data. Uh, I have uh, a list of the status uh, that I copied from the data. 
So we have local authorities that report to the federal state authorities, which then reports to the Environment Protection Agency, which in turn reports to the EU and to the public. And this tool was offline from the beginning of this year to the 1st of April. And here there's a new schedule, uh, the deadlines that the operators and the various authorities should keep to. That wasn't the case this and last year. Now, back to this offline phenomenon. Um, the thing is, as we've seen, the deadline for publication is has passed. The, the, uh, pub, um, reporting uh, was supposed to have happened by early April. Um, Oh, end of April, but since it was offline until the 1st of April, well, things haven't been updated, but at least there is a notice on that. The state of Brandenburg has said publicly that they are extending their deadline to the end of May, and the tool is working now. Okay. So this is Brandenburg and North Rhine-Westphalia. State of things, Brandenburg is slightly advanced, but Bavaria, Bavaria, has no information at all. Um, they are saying something on the website about the reporting year 2021. Um, we will supply forms for registering and, and submitting uh, the data. So they are switching to paper. The paper, it's not very easy to understand. So back to the power plant data. PlantWatch.de, how does a coal power plant work? Coal is being ground, grinded, then burnt, in, and uh, water is thus uh, turned into steam, which drives a turbine, and through the rotational energy, a generator then generates electricity, which is then fed into the grid. And we can now first look at these power plants in more detail. Let's start with the largest fails, and we'll start with the power plant in Neurath. Um, they have this 1970 bug, uh, so they didn't start operating in 1970, and several blocks here exist. Most of these were constructed from 1972 to 1976. Two new blocks are online on the grid have been since 2012. And there sadly was a uh, an accident, a severe accident, when a scaffolding collapsed and there were fatalities and injuries, two people died. That was in 2017 during construction. Investigation was then later stopped and the uh, there was simply a miscalculation in the capacity of the scaffolding, the load capacity. And the operator was able to say, well, they didn't know any better, and it was technical failure of the parts that were used. That's what this was uh, judged to be. So we have a Another plant by the North Rhine-Westphalian operator, RWE. Uh, this is an old plant that uh, went onto the grid in 63, was then renovated, and in 2008, from 2008, two new blocks uh, were supposed to be built. And, well, what could possibly happen when RWE built a power plant? We can see the result here. Google Maps very nicely showing that one of the cooling towers has steam coming from it, the other does not. So what happened? Well, only one of the blocks ever went into operation. The other was uh, damaged as it was put into operation. Um, acid was emitted and uh, this is something that is used uh, in power plants, but it flowed somewhere where it shouldn't have got to. 
that is parts of the turbine. These were damaged and it was a complete write-off. So when I started Plant Watch, uh, this was actually a specific uh, kind of entry um, as a reserve or something, but um, yeah. The power plant should have been taken off the grid um, because of um, current laws on coal um, power being grandfathered out, but it didn't happen. So how do you grandfather out um, different types of coal? Thus, um, the government decides on a date where um, the coal power plant must get off the grid, but that's different for um, the coal that is uh, mostly produced in Germany, which is um, hard coal or black coal. And they uh, get a certain um, reparations to compensate um, for the lowering of um, energy output. And North Rhine Westphalia or the operator um, put out an offer. And um, this is one of the plants that shouldn't produce power anymore, but um, it was decided that the um, power plant was essential to the system. And uh, this is why it's not taken off the grid. And the operator, Ambrian, will rebuild. Uh, the power plant and switch it from um, switch to a different operating um, process. So if another power plant were to fail, this system would uh, make it so that um, the consequences on the network aren't too bad. Yeah, now let's get on to another power plant. So there were, um, it was planned in 2004, and in 2005, the um, mayor from the Conservative Party, CDU, uh, CDU um, decided to build two instead of one blocks and also to have um, uh, district heating incorporated. Um, they started building it in 2007, and it was um, in operation from 2012. And there were problems with the T24 steel that was used, and also the welding was um, controversial. Because uh, the water in the power plant is under a lot of pressure, there was um, some delays, and in 2015, uh, the power plant was finally on grid. So in 2017, the uh, European Court um, decided that the um, authorization for the power plant was faulty and the continuous cooling uh, was uh, banned. Because as you see, uh, the power plant is next to a river, and of course it would make sense for the operator to just take water from the river to cool the plant and then uh, pump the water back into the river. But, well, that is not very good for the river and the fishes, and this is why it was banned. 
and where it was uh, prohibited, and now they have to use a cooling tower, which adds a lot of cost and um, brings down the power plant's efficiency. The original plan was to have district heating for the whole city of Hamburg from this power plant. But authorization was also very hard here, and uh, the plans were dropped in the end. And this is a very new power plant compared to others in Germany. Now let's get to the most controversial power plant in Germany. Some people say it's a new block. Um, in terms of authorization, but um, I can more or less decide which blocks I map onto which uh, power plant. So this um, power plant, Dutton 4, was uh, built between 1964 and 1969. So you see, power plants aren't made, built or made for uh, 10 years of service, but for a very long period of service. In 2009, uh, the highest uh, administrative court in um, North Rhine-Westphalia in uh, Münster decided that um, the development plan um, was not good, and uh, the, bill, uh, the, the construction was halted, and uh, three old blocks were also um, put out of operation in 2014. Decommissioned in 2014. And the, um, con uh, the administrative court said that it wasn't possible to um, just um, stop the decommissioning. So this was continued. And at the moment, uh, the power plant has to run for two more years. Uh, with a special permission, um, as it was always used for German yeah, railway. In 2012, the emission um, permission was lifted by the administrative court. This is the last step before a power plant is put into operation, uh, where you check um, the emission values and check whether um, you can continue running it. Um, there was a special permission put out, and in uh, 2017, a new emission permission was applied for, and in 2020, it was approved, and in 2021, it turned out that the decision by the city of Essen was not valid, because they would have had to explore uh, more possible areas, and as such, the development plan was deemed invalid. And, yeah, this uh, still um, the power plant has permission to operate. And, but it's, it's still planned to take it off the grid in the end. Now let's look at another uh, German um, power plant tragedy. The 
um, Irshing power plant was built in 1969 um, as a oil power plant and it was um, extended in 1974 by a third block and in 2006 they started building a block four uh, which took even longer than um, Block 5. And in, um, since 2013, um, this plant has been under threat of discontinuation. But um, in the wake of the Ukraine crisis, this power plant was deemed um, relevant to the system, essential, and die am Block 5 beteiligt sind, die Entschädigungszahlungen, diese Nichtstilllegung. Seit 2020 war es dann regulär im This this plant was um, running regularly since 2020 because um, coal prices went up. And you can see that in, when you look at how high the load is on the single power plants. Now, uh, the future of these plants is uncertain because of the war waged by Russia and the uh, um, Federal Grid Agency deemed the power plant a special network um, operation device and basically power consumers are paying for all of this. Now let's get to more positive um, power plant developments. When we look at the emission values of this power plant, they're rather low. It's much better than coal plants. So this would have been a good intermediary solution. This um, power plant went into operation in 1957, and it was later extended by two coal blocks that are no longer in operation. And in 2013, a new block was um, built and it was um, put in it to operation in 2016. And it also provides district heating for the city, and this is what it looks like. Well, another specialty here. This um, power plant was uh, started in 2019. It doesn't have that much power, but um, as a special feature, it has 20 gas motors instead of a gas turbine. And they managed to get from zero to 100% um, performance in five minutes, which is amazing because those old black coal um, power plants, when you take them off the grid, it takes a lot of time for them to even start up again, so it's hardly ever worth it. Now, we see that there's been a lot of um, very unfortunate stories. We have a situation where brand new um, power plants are being stopped and put out of operation. And also you see that uh, the phase out of coal in the Ukraine, coal, uh, since the Ukraine crisis, coal has been kind of accepted as an intermediary solution. But our um, shift towards renewable energies is being hindered by the fact that we're still that dependent on coal. England, for example, or uh, the UK, um, has managed to completely become independent of their coal plants, and even Spain has managed to do that, and uh, we still haven't. I'm not a friend of uh, nuclear power. 
And I think that Katanon, for example, the French power plant, um, you've seen uh, that uh, the plant has cracks in the primary um, circle and it's still being kept running because um, France has a lack of power plants and that's really bad. Now, would it be possible to use nuclear energy responsibly and effectively? And maybe that might have been better than using coal and gas as we did in Germany. Because the, um, we even built new power plants in order to stop um, nuclear energy. And this might have been a mistake. It might have also been a mistake that um, we didn't invest more in renewable energies. And many, many plants in that direction uh, were scrapped. We're between three and uh, seven kilowatt hours where it should be 19. So what do you do if you have a house um, in the countryside uh, you can you can have a solar uh, solar panel on your roof and it's always good to make decisions that um, bear our environment in mind. We have to consume responsibly and um, it's up to the government to ensure that uh, we don't use that much coal or that we get away from our old means of energy production. Thank you very much for your insights. There are questions. The European emission data um, do they also include ships? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think it's only stationary uh, plants. They <laughs> concrete factories, I think, agricultural operations, so nitrogen and ammonium are included, but ships, I think, are not. Okay. How many historical and legal information um, can be read from the API? Well, all these legal issues uh, regarding the Dutton Fear plant, for example, that is my own research. The uh, list of power plants will only give me information on you can see this here too. So you can see when it was put into operation, what the load was when it was decommissioned or switched off. But all the legal details are extra research. And it's not a real API. Uh, it's not something that I can do via HTTP request giving me the ready data. No, these are mainly Excel sheets, CSV files. Uh, you can actually choose the format in the power plant list. Uh, CSV is one of the formats there too. The EU data is available as an SQLite database, but, every, but the um, smart data only as CSV. Okay, one more question. Why do you use Google Maps and not OSM? <laughs> yeah, good question. I thought at the time that Google Maps would be simpler to use, but uh, from a political or privacy point of view, OpenStreetMap would have been superior. And I do have to go back to the site because the identification isn't happening via GPS data at the moment, which is actually available. But through the via the name of the power plant, which means that some of these plants are misattributed. So if I work on this again, I might switch it to OpenStreetMap. All right. 
Also in Are Sprache. you going to put up the slides on pre-talks so we can download them? The interpreters would have loved the slides too. I think I will upload the slides. I'll have to go through the images I used, but most of these are screenshots from either PlantWatch or the Northern Westphalian state portal, the data that they offer. That is, yeah, I think I will. Well, personally, I'm very interested in Dutton 4. That's because of my personal history. I um, did my driver's license there. So I grew up in the area. But many people have difficulties understanding the different characteristics of um, power plants. Nuclear plants, for example, have a very consistent performance and they can run for very stably for a very long time. A gas plant is uh, very easy to switch on and off. Especially um, the one in Kiel is uh, that starts so very quickly that you mentioned. Well, we don't always have wind and we don't always have sun, so that has an influence on how much power we have readily available. Can you um, elaborate on that? Yeah. Uh, back to the competition because there you can see for one you looking at the um, let's start with this one so you can see that currently we are in spring of course so solar panels actually um, deliver some energy so there is a power consumption in um, some color and the other colors generation. So um, you have biomass uh, that is available. Yes, but in mid medium term, we will have to rely on plants that can be regulated and switched on and off. On the other hand, the, the red line, by the way, is consumption. But on the other hand, the ICPP, um, IPCC report that was published, tells us that we have little time left. So we should start straight away to, to extend wind and solar, solar power. And there are many other power stations, power plants. There is a heating plant uh, that went into operation in the late 60s which was actually considered relevant to the system because it and, and we have many nuclear power stations in the southern states of Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg. I have no silver bullet solution here how we can reach where we have to get to, but we can see from Spain and the UK that even without large amounts of nuclear power, you can get quite far. And looking at the Nordic states, you see the tips of Norway and Sweden on the map too. They are somewhat better suited because they have a lot of water power available, a form of energy that is available around the clock, of course. Does that answer your question to some extent? Yeah, yeah. basically. There, uh, I think there's a lack of knowledge, basically, what different kinds of uh, power plants we have, since um, people's naive um, idea of uh, power plants is that they just generate power all of the time and um, deliver it directly to our um, power outlets. No, I was about... Um, do you take it to account that different um, power plants just have different characters, so to speak? So, that, that was my idea. Because we're looking at coal, 
Paris stations here, but there are others as well. I have shown coal, and then there are gas plants, which means that uh, they don't use coal that is ground down with gas, and that is then burnt, and then the ignition, the, the gases that result are used directly, and you can have a second stage that makes it uh, gas and steam. Um, and then there is photovoltaic, photovoltaics, of course. So that is uh, silicon, basically, much like computer chips, depends on the sun shining. Then there is wind, wind power, which, as we've seen from last week, uh, can produce a lot more energy than it uh, does now. So that fluctuates. Then there is biomass. So that could be waste. It could also be maize, which is then fermented, turned into gas that way, which is then burnt. Then we have a small per share of waste incineration. Much of that is actually added to coal plants and burned in the same process. And then there are some specific plants to burn that. Then we have the little water energy that we have naturally and some storage. And that's about it, I think. Of course, and nuclear power too. And yes, gas plants are e quickest to regulate. We have a gradient here about 90 megawatts per minute or in this, this coastal plant in Kiel from zero to full capacity in five minutes. That is remarkable. Coal plants would use four to eight hours for that. And it's not really the case that nuclear plants were completely inflexible. Other countries do throttle them, but since Germany is exiting from nuclear power and gas has become much more expensive, that does mean that it is worth for operators to keep the nuclear plants running constantly. It's not an absolute necessity. They can be regulated more or less like modern-ish coal plants. Right. Yeah, of course, um, you have to um, have cost efficiency in mind. But if you're interested in having both things at the same time, that's a big challenge. Exiting nuclear power and coal at the same time. We would have to have a new technology ready that is very efficient. And now we killed the solar um, industry in the past 10 or 20 years. And now we have, if you want to have solar power, you have to order from China. And that is just controversial in itself. If you want to um, have renewable energy here, you have to ship the parts from um, the other side of the world. That's absurd. Absolutely, I agree. That is absurd. My grandfather has photovoltaic modules on his roof that are locally were locally made, but by now all these companies have either been shut down or have turned into resellers for Chinese products. So it has to be said that politics, the then federal government, together with the industry, has made a choice that was simply a failure in terms of state economics. Um, and we can see in the city of Rostock and at the Baltic Sea, where a plant is closing, a production facility, 
uh, wind plant because they can only produce the rotors up to a certain size. And these rotors have expanded in size so much that this kind of production isn't this isn't worth anymore. Yeah, maybe we can have a chat about that in the breakout room. Um, firstly, I would like to thank.